Hello, it has been a while. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Philly Philly and it's been a hot minute since I was streaming because of the holidays. I was taking a little bit of time off, but I did put together a video. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet about amazing meatballs that I made for my hub's birthday this year that I make every year almost for his birthday. It's a family favorite, um, not created by our family, but it's one I, I found a while back. But today, we are talking about a different kind of Italian food, something that is super simple. The meatballs, while exactly they are phenomenal and they're worth the effort, they do take some time. Tonight is one of the quickest meals that you can do um, with pasta, with an Italian spin on it, and it's pasta aglio e olio, which basically means pasta with garlic and oil. And it's one of the simplest dishes, and honestly, I feel like if, and if you like pasta, this is probably one of your favorite comfort bowls. There's many comfort bowls um, in Italian cuisine. There is cacio e pepe. There is um, carbonara. There's so many yummy ways to eat pasta, but this is one of the simplest one. And probably the next simplest would be cacio e pepe. And sometime I will share with you um, the way we do cacio e pepe here. But today it's pasta aglio e olio. And it's one of the first recipes I actually taught my son, Matt, who likes to cook. And it's one of his go-tos, it makes the round. So while we're using it as a quick weeknight meal, um, it really can be enjoyed anytime. And I'm gonna show you my version, um, which is a little different than the traditional versions. And it was one that I actually came across when I was dousing myself in cooking shows over the years. And it was a version, and I think it was an Italian, and the way he cooked it for his friends. So I'm gonna be sharing that. So basically what you're gonna want is your favorite kind of pasta. Um, today we are, one of my favorite kinds is bucatini, so that's what we're using. Um, but it could be a short pasta. It really could be whatever that you really enjoy. And typically I would be using um, barilla. Barilla is easy to find here in the States. Um, and it's a decent pasta. Um, uh, reliable, yummy, and the bucatini is especially good. It comes from their, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this right, but Colosion collection. It's a little bit, um, I think it's just a slightly different recipe than the rest of their pastas, and it is very, very good. And also, it's how they use it to create the pasta and the die cut. Um, and this is excellent. But I was out with a friend today um, over in Collingswood, and we were having lunch. And we were stopping at a wonderful foodie store there, and I saw amazing pasta choices. So I decided I was going to pick up something special for tonight. So I'm actually using some pasta that was made in Italy. It's um, from Rusticella di Bruzzo, and it's pasta abruzzese di semolina di granadura, which I'm sure I'm saying very terrible. But that's my best, and this is a bucatini. So, um, so this is what we're going to use tonight, make it a little special, seeing as it's the star of our dinner, a very simple dinner of pasta and a, an unusual salad that I'm going to be getting started with in just a minute. Um, I just thought that I would up the pasta. It would be totally fine with barillas, but we're going to just we're going to ramp, ramp it up a little bit. So there's two things I'm going to do right now before I get started. The first one is I'm going to get my water boiling now you could use a big pot of water but you've seen that sometimes i like to cook my cook my pasta in a flat pan like this which is what i'm going to do today so really it's whatever you decide to cook it in if you use a flat pan just make sure it's wide enough to fit the pasta if you're using long pasta if you're using shorter pasta you can use a smaller pot it's funny there's a lot to be said about how much water to adequately cook pasta and i feel like i've watched a bajillion shows about it and at the end of the day it all comes out good so it's really whatever your preference is I'm gonna put a little too much water there there we go so I'm gonna carefully the only thing is you have to be very balanced when you do it this way carefully bring my pot or my pan of water over here and I'm going to get that going and I'm gonna lid for it too now this pan I'll also be cooking the pasta in, um, and you'll kind of see how I do that. So I'm going to do a little shift around um, in a minute. On my white pan, which you'll see, and I do have my camera working for that, on my white pan, I'll be actually uh, making the sauce. So 
I'm going to do that there, and then I'm going to do a little shifting and toss it in the pan and cook the pasta in. So let me get a lid so that that can come to boil a little quicker. I would have to say my best tip for pasta is start the water boiling before you're going to need it or before you think you're going to need it because, you, as we often talk about, just turn it off after it's boiling and then it can come back to a boil super quick. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we've got that, uh, the water boiling. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my air fryer because I am making a side dish to have with our pasta tonight. So let me get my air fryer started and I will tell you about that. So I saw on, actually it was on YouTube Shorts, this is a, um, a channel called DD Cooks, and she had these balsamic soy mushrooms that looked and sounded so good, and it was in a short, so I just checked that out, jotted a few notes down, and that's what we're going to be having um, with our pasta. And I'm going to be putting them on a bed of arugula, and so it's going to be kind of like a warm mushroom salad but um but yeah so that's kind of what we're gonna have on the side because you could just have pasta but i like having a little veg and you guys know that about me i need a little white wine especially for my friend poe in case she is watching um i always want to give a little shout out to her and um i think we'll get started in the mushrooms so you could use just regular white mushrooms and honestly you could really probably use whatever mushrooms you wanted I think they would behoove them to be firm. And so I'm just gonna get these mushrooms washed and pared down just a little bit. And I'm gonna use just a wet paper towel. You don't wanna soak your mushrooms, you just wanna kind of get off that dirt. So the pasta aglio olio, it comes together pretty quick. It's really, the sauce you, it cooks just in as long as it takes you to cook your pasta. So that's why this is good for me to get going and in the oven because this will take the mushrooms will take a little bit these mushrooms are going to be tossed in a sauce of butter olive oil balsamic glaze or you could use balsamic olive oil with added sugar some soy sauce some garlic some black pepper and then you're going to roast them until the sauce reduces so it makes more of a glaze. And they will be delicious on top of arugula. I feel like the richness of when I saw this recipe, the richness of the sauce will actually be balanced nicely with the bite, the peppery bite of the arugula. But if you don't like arugula, you could always put on, you know, a spring mix. You could even use, you know, red or green lettuce or even romaine. Just do your favorite lettuce. So I'm just wiping all these mushrooms, and then I'm going to just take off some of the long stem. Now, the mushrooms I got are actually, that one's really dirty, I'm gonna save that one for last, are, a lot of them are quite large. So I am going to, I kind of wanted to keep these mushrooms whole, but the mushrooms I got were on the larger side. So I'm going to actually need to cut some of these down. I just want my mushrooms to be fairly the same size so that they cook evenly. So if you need to cut some to do that, that's the only reason I'll be cutting them. It'll also help fit in the pan a little bit. And I'm gonna use my air fryer to cook them because I know that it'll cook them a little quicker, which is nice. I was just talking to my friend who I had lunch with about this and she was asking how I liked my air fryer and I was like, oh my gosh, it is the workhorse in our kitchen. It just does vegetables in such a wonderful way and it really, I feel like saves on the energy. I'm heating up our little place here in the city. Rinse my hands all this dirt. And then I'm just going to take a little paring knife and just trim down that stem. And it's not necessary to trim down that stem, but I would prefer it that way. So we all can do what we're in the kitchen. We get to do what we prefer, right? So I hope everyone had a great holiday. I hope you, uh, hopefully, I know there was a lot of. Um, if you were in the, in the United States, there was a big storm that caused a lot of drama with travel. So hopefully you weren't caught up in that. And if you were, I hope you got to where you needed to be safely. And if you were elsewhere, I hope the weather allowed for travel and visiting friends and loved ones for the holidays. By the way, if you, um, I appreciate the support. In fact, we just broke 
um, 300 subscribers today. So super thrilled about that. And I want you to know that I really appreciate your support. I appreciate the support of all my subscribers. Um, I plan on in the new year doing more polls and more um, interaction on the community tab to find out what you want to see on these live streams, the kind of food, um, any even the specifics of it. So, or maybe different kinds of content. So look for those. I'm just gonna, these huge ones, I'm gonna cut into fours. My aim is, these are what I was hoping all the mushrooms would be like. So that one's close enough. And even, that one has a bad spot. That one's even close enough. That just means my air fryer's ready. This one though, I gotta cut in half. This one I need to cut in half. So we're just trying to get them generally to be about the same size. And then these I'll do in four. But I do, I hope everyone had a nice holiday with their family and friends. Well, I know we still have the New Year, New Year's Eve to, to look forward to. I feel like this week between Christmas and New Year's is always a blur. So my mushrooms are all set to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the mixture ready, okay? So I'm gonna get a bowl, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna use this bowl. I got some new bowls for Christmas. In fact, that was kind of a theme. Mom got lots of different kinds of bowls. So this is one bowl I got, and I'm gonna be using it for the pasta today. But this also would serve well as a mixing bowl. So I'm gonna get my sauce ready. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some melted butter in here. Our sauce consists of some melted butter. So put that in. Some olive oil. I don't really have amounts because I'm just doing it based upon her YouTube short, but it's kind of equal parts butter and olive oil. The butter, of course, lends a unique flavor, a little more flavor. And then, oh, I do need a little garlic, so I'm gonna need to. I'm gonna get my. You know what? Um, I'm gonna save. I'm just to, for the interest of time, give me some oven. I'm gonna use my because I am gonna be chopping up some garlic. But this will be a little quicker so I can get them in the oven. So I'm going to use my little garlic paste. You know, the stuff that I love. It's near the end, so I need to get it out. So I'm going to just do a little dab of that. There we go. But you could just mince some garlic. But I'm just in the interest of time because I do want to get these cooking. All right, so I put my olive oil, my butter, my garlic. And then I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, they put in some soy sauce. And this is kind of the way they used, they seasoned it with salt, so you're not going to add any salt. And then they put about the same amount of um, a balsamic glaze. So I'm just going to get some glaze in here. I'm kind of getting lower on my glaze. And this adds some sweetness and some thickness. And then black pepper, which I love black pepper, so that, that is yummy. So I'm going to get my black pepper. Get that going in. And then I'm going to toss the mushrooms in there and I'm going to cook it. If it was a regular oven, I would cook it at 400 for 20 minutes, stirring after 10. But here, I'm going to use my, my uh, air fryer. So it's going to be at 380. And I am going to stir it after 8 minutes and I'm going to expect it will cook in about 16 minutes. Okay. So just tossing this up. I would really like to get my whisk out, but I'm going to be patient. So I've got that all mixed together. How bad could that be, right? All good flavors in there. There we go. And I'm going to toss my mushrooms in there. And then these are going to go in a pan in the oven. So I'm just get these tossed, nicely coated. And I'll dump this whole thing in the pan. Now I have a pan that absolutely fits perfectly. Make sure I don't get any of this balsamic soy mixture on my choice of a almost white blouse. My off-white blouse here probably was not the best move. I was thinking more about the spaghetti aglio olio not having any possible staining ability. There we go. Oh, these already smell good. I will have to tell you. Okay, so they are properly tossed. Now I'm going to get the pan, and I'm just going to, and I see I'm already boiling, so I'm going to see how easy that is. Now my skillet is just minutes away from being ready to put the pasta in when I'm ready for it. I'm just going to take this pan that I know fits in my, um, my air fryer, and 
I'm going to just douse it with some olive oil and I'm going to dump this and I'm going to get that in. And like I said, these will be absolutely delicious on top of our arugula. There we go. Excellent. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take this, put it in our air fryer for eight minutes. Actually, I'm going to set it for 16 so that I can, uh, it'll beep at eight. So let me get it going. Uh, let's see here. Temperature, 380. And do a 16 shake. And then I can forget about it because it'll beep when it needs me to, um, to toss them. So I'm actually just going to rinse this and wash this out because I can use this for the mushrooms when they are done. So this was a little extra content. You didn't think I was just going to be cooking pasta, did you? I mean, that would have been fine, but it's not a full meal. I feel like as a mama, I got to give you like the full rounded meal, get you some other food groups. Alrighty. So you'll have to let me know if you're watching this video now or if you're watching it after it is not live stream as a video. Let me know some of your favorite ways to have pasta. I feel like I feel like this recipe specifically lends itself to such a comfort experience for um, for the person eating it because it really harkens back to how some of us first had pasta, which was with just with butter and cheese. So this is a little more grown up. It's got some olive oil instead of the butter, some garlic, some red pepper flakes, um, and then you you know use cheese, of course, at the end. But I feel like it really lends itself to that simple part of pasta where you're really just enjoying um, the noodles that you've picked with a couple of flavorings that are simple that just make it even more yummy. So the way that mine is a little different, when I was watching a show Oh my gosh, it's been over 10 years ago. Um, the fella in there, it was a cooking show, but it was done a little more lifestyle. So it followed this cook and his friends um, through their activities, and then he would cook them a meal at the end, or the, depending on what time of day it was. So it was a late night, they'd all been out, and they were having a late night snack. So that's another use of this. You could have this as a late night snack. I know at my age I probably can't, but when I was younger I definitely could have. And what he did that was special, is he put on top this, this um, topping made with breadcrumbs and parsley. And it just totally changed it. It totally elevated the experience because it gave a whole new texture and flavor to the top of the pasta. So that's what we're gonna do. So you can absolutely leave this step out and keep the agave olio just very pure with what we'll be doing in that white pan in just a minute. But instead, I'm going to show you what I would do um, as a topping. And this topping can be is great really on almost any pasta. Like I wouldn't put it on a red pasta, but it would be great actually on cacio e pepe. It would be great on carbonara. Like it just adds a little zhuzh to and crunch to the top of your pastas. So to do that, I'm going to get our, I'm going to actually start this so you can see. And hopefully this won't delay my stream at all. There we go. Okay, so we get the fire on. Get that fire going. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Not a lot. I'm not looking to make these super oily. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. And in that, I'm also going to be putting, and I like to use panko breadcrumbs. I believe that's what he used as well. Mine is actually a mixture. It has, I've used this container and put different ones in there. It's a mixture of white and wheat. So um, I actually really like the wheat breadcrumbs. If you ever want something different, if you can find whole wheat breadcrumbs, they actually are really yummy. They're definitely nuttier. Um, super delicious. And then I'm just going to season it with a pinch of salt, two pinches. I am going to give it a little bit of pepper. And then I'm going to go get some parsley. Now, I don't have fresh parsley with me now, but as you know, um, one of the things that I do is I freeze my herbs, so I have some frozen parsley, so I'm actually going to put that on top here. And then what's going to happen is that parsley is going to actually dry out, even if you use fresh. 
uh, the frozen will dry out too. So it's going to toss and crisp up and it just really makes a very yummy experience. So we grab that. But they are going to brown up, even the white ones are going to brown up. And then these are my frozen, it's my frozen parsley. Urgh, a little hard to get, but so I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it moves around because it's all frozen. And I'm just going to sprinkle a bunch of that in there. And it's actually just going to continue to dry out. That way, I'll need some of this later on top of my mushrooms, although actually I'm thinking about putting my basil on there. And then I'm just going to toss this around. And I can smell the grassiness of the parsley. It's going to make a delicious coffee. There we go. All right. Okay, so we've got that going and we're going to keep an eye on it. We don't want that to burn. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is get my cheese ready. So I want to make sure that's ready for and Is the pasta ready? No, the, um, the water is boiled though, so all I have to do is bring it back up. So it'll, I can't start the pasta in until I'm ready to cook the sauce. I need this to finish. Okay, I'm just trying to strategically figure out. Strategic? Strategery. What are you trying to strategically figure out? Are you sure? All right, so then I'm going to get this grated up. Okay. So, when was the first time you had Ali 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 that's a good question. Um, it wasn't at a restaurant. Um, I think it was after seeing the show. Because I had you, never made it. How do you say it? Agli olio. Say that five times. Right. No, I believe, I mean, because this was over, I think this was 15 years ago, maybe more. And I saw the show. And I think I did it for us. Oh, they're ready. So okay. which show? Which show? Uh, I don't remember the name of the show. So these are plenty brown. I'm going to get them off. I don't want them to burn. And I'm here. Actually, sweetie, I have a big favor. Yep. Can you get a paper towel real quick on that little white plate over there? As quick as you can, because these are going to burn. I need to get these off. Just uh -huh. one. Just one. And fold it in half and put it on that. Thank you. Sorry, friends. This is, I'm tossing these and I have them off, but I... Let them go just so they're not burned. Thank you. Thank you. But I just don't want them to get burned. There we go. Saved in the nick of time. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to put them, since I used olive oil, I'm just going to put them there um, on a paper towel just to make sure that they don't. I'm going to get this clean. Ooh, listen to that. There we go. This sounds love. really mess up the pan. I just had to, I wanted to kind of cool it down, turn it off. So you can see these got almost, almost too dark. They're just on the, they're just on the <laughs> edge. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I looked back. So that's why you always have to keep an eye on your cooking, right? You never know what's going to happen. But anyway, so no, that show, I believe, because I was, because this, I would say you thought would be true of me. I would see something on a cooking show, and then we'd have it the next night for dinner, or that night for dinner, or the next week for dinner, because yeah. I would kind of be inspired. Uh, no, no, I, I got to do something with that. I would be inspired. I would be excited about what I saw. 
Did, you did. You used to do that. You would get, oh my gosh. Oh, I got to show this. That's, that's what those look like. Look at that. Already they look good. But you can see it's still really soupy. And that's what you'd expect because the mushrooms are releasing a lot of their moisture. And so what we're wanting to have happen is we want for there to be a reduction in the sauce. But that looks good. So that's what you bought at the market today. What's that? Is that the, the thing that you weren't going to tell me about? Please? No. Oh, I'm going to show you what I bought the market today. Let me get those in. So when I was at the market today, I also, on our way home after the market, I saw this store that I haven't been in for years. And I got you a surprise that we are going to have for dinner tomorrow night. I'm gonna let you find the surprise. So Hub's got a surprise. So you go into the fridge, it's the bottom um, drawer. And can you bring out what's in the bottom drawer? And let everybody else know what surprise I bought for you today. For both of us, actually. Mega fish? Nope. He's cute, isn't he? He's cute. Is this Bobby Shays? Yes. Uh, Bobby Shays. No, tell them about what Bobby Shays are. Bobby Shays crab cakes. But no, but they don't know what that means. Well, so Bobby Shays is a, a place. He used to have a, a place, a restaurant in, I guess, Westmont called Shay Robert. And then he stopped doing that and he opened up a number of these markets that um, are not markets. What would you call them? I guess kind of, yeah, kind of markets. They're his markets. So yeah. they had fresh food that they made. It was fresh food. And it was them. mostly crab cakes. It was mostly either fried or um, broiled crab cakes. And then kind of went into some other things too. So we used to get... We used to get great uh, lamb, oh, lamb, lamb chops. And, oh my oh gosh. Oh my God, it was great. So, and he's still around. Yep. So they have they have one in Collingswood, and I wanted to get the broiled crab cakes because those are our favorites. Yeah, are the broiled really crab good. cakes? But, it's all lump. It's just lump crab crab meat. It's great. But they don't carry them. They uh, only got so them. Those, those weren't lump. No, those are pan fried. They were the closest I could get. Wait, no, they're all lamp, lump honey. No, they are no, not broiled. I, I, that's what I mean. Yeah, they're not broiled. So they have three different kinds of crab cakes. They have traditional, which are covered in panko breadcrumbs, um, so they're breaded. And then they have these broiled ones that involve no breading, just the crabby yumminess. And then the pan fried ones have a little bit, um, and they have a couple other things in there. Like there's, it's not just plain, if you saw, I think there's some red pepper and stuff in there. There's a, I felt like there was a little more to it, but it was the closest. I didn't, I actually, I love, I even like his traditional ones that are breaded, but I prefer not to have the breading. I just, I prefer to just focus on the good crab meat. So um, he said that, or she said, the woman there told me that they only got them once, um, the broil. They just don't send the broil there. Yeah. So you can only get them at the Cherry Hill location, which made me really sad because huh. that location is really convenient, the one there. Which one? In Collingswood. Yeah. Right. So they don't, do they, said, even, they don't have the one in Morristown anymore, do they? I have no idea. Oh, well. So anyway, but the Collingswood one for us is super convenient. So, and I don't think I quite realized that. So, okay, so now I'm gonna start getting things ready for the sauce. Um, I'm just gonna do this next step and then I'm gonna get, in fact, let me get this going. Um, let me get the pasta in. So, the sauce involves garlic. Um, and there's a couple ways you could do it. You could just smash these and put them in whole, but you really need the garlic for the flavoring. Um, and so to me, it gives a little more subtle flavor. And even though Hubs is a little sensitive, I really want there to be a punch of garlic with this. You could also mince them up, but most often I see them sliced. And what's nice about the slices for my Hubs is that he can pick around them, because um, he'll see it. And they have all that surface area on each of the slices to, uh, to flavor the oil, because really that's what you're gonna be doing flavoring that oil. So I'm just going to slice these three um, garlic cloves. Now we're going to be making two uh, main entree serving sizes. So 
I mean, this is where, and again, this is the joy of being a home cook. You can, you might say, oh, Philly, Philly, that is not enough garlic. I would double it, then double it, right? Being a home cook, we can make these recipes to our likes. So um, for me, I love garlic, and I think though this is this is plenty. I, you know, because kind of I want everything to be all happy. I want every component of it to kind of work well with all the other components. And Shelby, you're gonna get stepped on, my girl. So our water is boiling. So I'm gonna be putting in here. I'm gonna get my pasta we got at the special store. And I'm gonna cut that open. You gotta move, girly. The dog apparently wants some aglio olio too. This. There go. Excellent. And oh, this looks so nice. And I'm going to cook half of this. So let me try to get this out. Second. Now I could totally measure and make sure I have half. I'm just going to eyeball it. Yep, that looks about right. more. And I'm going to salt this first because we know we want this water salted. Oh, I need to get more salt out. And my salt is getting low, so I'm going to need to get more of that. I'm going to put my pasta here just for a second. Okay. Salt my water. Now, I don't have the camera on this because this part you really don't have to see right now. Um, I'm going to be making the sauce in a second. So I salted my water, I'm going to put my bucatini in, and I'm just going to want to toss it around every now and again. This will take 10 to 12 minutes, so I'm going to set my timer for the lower time, so I don't forget. And of course, we want it al dente, that is our bowl. And this, this guy can just hang out and enjoy. Enjoy the water bath. I'm going to get out a little half cup measure. This is what I do to remind myself to get some of that liquid gold, that liquid, that starchy water that is going to be created by this pasta being in here. I'm also going to get my heat on the other pan because I want to start my sauce over there. All right, let me check my mushrooms. Oh, yes. Oh, these look great. I'm going to just let these hang out. I'm just going to let these hang out in the air fryer to stay warm. They look perfectly done. It's nice and glazy now. They've shrunk. They've browned. They look delicious. I'm just going to turn that off. There we go. All right, so I've gotten my pan heated up. I'm going to put some olive oil in there. You want a pretty good amount of olive oil, because remember, this is the sauce. This is the sauce of the, of the whole thing. I'm turning down the heat because we do not want our garlic to burn. If you burn the garlic, you basically got to start over. It just kind of ruins, it kind of ruins the dish. So let me just move this over here, out of the way. So I have my garlic in there. And the other important ingredient is some red pepper flakes, okay? So this is gonna create a little bit of heat. Again, you put this as much or as little as you like. It also depends on how hot your red pepper flakes are. And you probably know that. Like I know the batch I currently have is a little spicy. So this is the flavoring point. I turned my heat all the way down onto low because I'm just flavoring my oil right now. I'm actually going to salt it a little. I'm going to pepper it. There we go. Because my stove does not have a good simmer, I'm actually going to turn it off 
If you have a good simmer, just put your pan on simmer right there. But I don't want my garlic to burn and my stove is a little funky, a little wonky, and so you have to know your stove and know what you can do and what you can't do. So our pasta's cooking. You can see, like, the sauce is done. The only thing we're gonna do is once the pasta's cooked, the pasta's gonna, um, I'm going to actually drain the pasta. I'm gonna put that sauce back in here. Which you, you don't have to have this craziness. You can use a pot and be done with it. But because I wanted to use my big pan that's good for tossing to cook my pasta, um, I'm gonna do a little transferring of sauce over to the big pan. And then you just add the pasta water that you need and you're done. So mine's gonna be a little complicated. You don't need yours to be as complicated as mine. It's just because I was stubborn and I wanted to use this pan. So. You don't have to be stubborn like me. You can use a, use a big pot. And honestly, I will have to say, part of it also is because I didn't want my Cubs, who is a wonderful dishwasher, to have to wash the big pot. Thank you. I know that's a pain in the, you know, the pain in you know where. Thank you. Ah, see? He appreciates those little things. What, do you, what are the little things that you do in your relationship to help make the other one happy. That little thing makes them happy. All right. So right now I can see that my garlic, and you can see in the pan, it's just the lightest golden. And I will put that heat back up once um, my pasta is supposed to be getting ready. And I'm gonna get my components in place because here are our breadcrumbs and these, let me see if you can hear them. Can you hear that? Yes, yum. So those are ready to go. We've got um, our mushrooms. Here's our salad. And this is our bowl. That's our bowl to try the pasta. And so once we do toss everything, what I do is I toss some cheese with the pasta and then I always put some cheese on top. In fact, you know what? I shouldn't have actually wrapped that up because we're gonna be making it rain on top too. The last flourish. There we go. Now we always use Parmesan and I do believe that's what's traditionally used for a pasta aglio olio, but if you wanted to do pecorino, it wouldn't be it'd be delicious. It's just another flavor profile. It's a little bit saltier, has a little more bite to it, like it's just it's delicious. Um, it's what I like to use for cacio e pepe, and that's what's traditional for it. But for your pasta agrio olio, you use what cheese you like. It could be a grana padano. That would be a really, a really nice cheese with it. But we usually go with parmesan. So our pasta water is getting nice. Let's see here. I'm going to get. Um, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm going to get this out so that I can. Pasta in it. And it's done. Okay. Let's see how we're doing. We've got about three minutes left. See, you know what? I should have actually, I would have had time to have done the garlic. I should have gotten the pasta in and then cut my garlic. I think I always, you know, I'm worried that I'm going to be chasing and, and not done. So we're ready, we can just hang out. In fact, you know what we can do? Let's get those those uh, mushrooms out. Show you how gorgeous those look. Oh my goodness, you get that pan out. We need a little help. Let's see. There we go. these beautiful mushrooms. So we'll put some of those on the bed of arugula. We'll have a killing time here. Oh, better save me some. Okay. Get a little bit of that sauce to drizzle. Nice. Okay. And 
go. Our mushrooms are ready. A little mushroom salad. You can see that. Gorgeous. You'd be great with that. Put our forks over here. Let's see how our pasta is doing. I think we need to try it. It's looking really. Nope, I can tell. You know what? I don't even have to try it. So, when you've been cooking a long time, when I went to touch the bucatini, especially the bucatini, because it has a hole in the middle, so there's a lot going on there. I could tell by the firmness right away that it had too much light. It had crunch in there. So, I know it's not even supposed to be ready yet, but you can, you know, so much with cooking is about our senses, and the sense of touch is a serious part of it, too. I think I'm also going to get my oil heated back up over there because I am getting closer. So I'm putting that on low just to get it warmed up. Now, if you did it the proper way and used the big old pot like I didn't do, you would, I would take my pasta right from the pot to that pan, but that pan will not be big enough for us to be tossing. So we are going to need to toss it here. I mean, technically I could. It's just going to be a mess. I think. Let me see. Ah, you know what? It might work. What do you think, Hubs? Should I try tossing it in a smaller pan? I think sure. it might work. I think it might work. You can do it. I can do it. It's, it's messy. You all won't care, right? Yeah. Okay, so when the bugger goes off, I am going to taste test my bucatini and see if it's done. I don't know if there's fingers crossed because I'm getting hungry. Did you want some wine to have with it too, sweetie? Yeah, sure. Are you going to get the wine? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's see. Let's see, almost there. 20 seconds, and then we'll do a taste test, see how it's doing. So what's your New Year's resolution then? Like I haven't you? decided. I think I thought of something and then I've forgotten about it. So isn't that, isn't that the way to do No, wasn't there something we talked about? Wasn't there something? I thought there was something that we talked about and said, oh, shoot, in the new year, we were going to do this and such. Who was it? No, I just did one. Just one. Okay. Thanks. Oh, I thought it was ready. Yeah, it's still, I can tell by touch this is not ready yet. Nope. I think it's about a couple minutes. Um, you know what I, I would like to do is we live in a wonderful city and I feel like um, I'd like to take advantage. I think we could try this though. How about this? We're going to try the mushroom salad. I would yeah. like to, I'm good. I would like to take advantage and do some more things in the city, like beyond the restaurants. Let's try it. Like what? Museums. Mm. Mmm, that's really good with it. Go, go with the arugula. There you go. Yeah, some museums. Um, like you did, you went to Chestnut Hill to go shopping, right? I did. For the holidays, like I'd like to go explore some other areas we don't go to as much. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Well, that's good. Well, that's really good. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. You know what I mean? But I feel like we have to plan it, or we won't do it. Don't you go that way? Like, if we don't plan it, we can't just say it's going to magically happen. So we should be more... Um, Intentional? Yeah, sure. That's a good way. How about you? Have you... Is there anything you were thinking in your resolution? I'm going to try not to do so much for other people and do more for myself. All right. I was joking. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't... No. What are your New Year's, New Year's resolutions? Actually, so chat them down below. Let's know. The exact opposite. What's that? I'm going to try to do more for others this year. Okay. That sounds lovely. Yeah. Well, you know what they say about goals. I kind of got away from it this year. So. You know what they say about goals? Okay. But you gotta kind of like quantify it oh, because. Ooh, uh oh, that did not go well. Oh, it's ready. Okay. It's ready? Oh, yep. So now I'm gonna do a little transferring. These mushrooms are really good. Transferring over to the oils that have been coming up that I turned up the temperature. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be fine. Oh, this is fine! 
I was worried about nothing. It's fine. Okay, so now, once it's here, then you are going to, and I'm going to put this back up, then you're going to just toss. You're going to toss it in that flavored oil. Toss, toss, toss. Toss, toss, toss. And if it seems too dry, you're going to add some of this liquid gold. But right now, everything's looking pretty good. Toss, toss, toss. So you just want everything to get flavored, all that yumminess. And you can see when you brought the pasta over, it brought water over also. So you kind of already did it that way. Okay. Whoopsie. Now, I'm going to bring this over. This is as quick as it comes together. And what I want to do now is get some of that cheese in there. Okay. So I'm going to just toss the cheese. Will you turn off the camera? Put it, can you go to there and put camera scene instead of the one it currently is, please? Just tossing. I don't want to get any on my shirt, so I'm going to stand back. Thank you. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to take some. The pepper? I'll put it on top. You're right. I should have put pepper in there. I have the red pepper. Some pepper, and then we want some more cheese. And I got a bunch here. Make it rain. And then we want those delicious breadcrumbs. Okay. And there you have it. Let me put it under here. Let me just wait. Pardon. There we go. Have it. Pasta aglio e olio. This is bucatini style. And let's do a taste. Was this your fork? Yeah, that was your fork yes. there. Okay, so let's do a taste now. We've had this before. It's really been a while though. Yeah, mm. It's here for the well. Yep. I'm That's telling it. you, the breadcrumbs are the like icing on top. They add flavor, oh, they add texture. They, they really, I'm telling you, if there's one thing you try from this, is try it with the breadcrumbs. That oh, is shoot, that is so good. But don't you agree? Don't the breadcrumbs just kind of make it special? They do, yeah. Yeah, it's, you wouldn't think so, but it does. Mm. So good. Awesome. Fantastic. The rest of the pasta. Mmm. Very good. Awesome. You like? Here's great. Simple meal elevated with simple steps, good ingredients. I'm telling you, try the breadcrumbs. They really bring it over the top. They make it awesome. They make it something special. And try the breadcrumbs on some of your other pasta dishes. Again, not the red sauces, but some of the other ones that are more olive oil based um, or even cheesy based. It's a nice crunch on top. Yep. So, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be dropping the schedule this week for January because we are on that brink right now. I don't even know what's coming up. I have some ideas, but I've got to actually the next couple of days sit down and think about how January is going to look. But thank you so much for your support this year. I started when in March, right? I started March. Is that what it was? I think it was March. Wow. It was zero, and I just went over 300, which I'm thrilled with. I'm humbled by. I appreciate all of your support, everyone. Please make sure you like and subscribe and let me know um, how you enjoy your pasta, any of your tips and tricks. Um, also, let me know what other pasta dishes you'd like to see in the future. And... I think that's it. So happy new year, everyone. And happy new year until we eat Cheers. again. See ya. Thank you.